Good morning. Good morning. Um, today's message is let go and let God. And how do we do that? Everybody made it through the storm okay? We did all right? We're going to bounce around a little bit. First uh, verse we're going to go to is uh, Proverbs 3, verses 5 and 6. You know, words are so important. And that's what we run our lives on, right? Is someone says one little good word or one little bad word can change our whole moment or the whole day, right? And it, there's one little word that I think of, right? Creator, right? Pass that word around and watch what people do with it, right? The creator of creation, right? <laughs> Somehow, somehow that gets people all twisted up. I don't understand just a couple of little words like that. So one of my favorite little words that I like to do is trust. Right? We've all had wreckage in our lives somehow, and the hardest word that we have to deal with is trust. Right? And I use this verse all the time. Verse 5. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. How do I give it to God? I give it to God by not listening to myself. <laughs> right? And I, I, used to, I used to joke about this verse. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. Oh, I understand that one. <laughs> well, then I guess I got it wrong. Right? Because it's my understanding. Because what is the truth? The major word is truth. Right? Trust. Who do I trust in? I can't trust in myself. I can't trust in, in what's going on in society. You know, I have all these issues going on. So I need to learn to trust in the Lord. I just... Uh, with what? What do I got to trust in the Lord with? With my heart, right? Not a piece of my heart, not sometimes of my heart, not all of my heart. I need to trust with all of my heart, right? I don't trust myself with all of my heart. How do I learn to trust in the Lord? Well, in all your ways acknowledge Him and He will make your path straight, right? So I trust and when I leave my house today, I say, Lord, show me what you would like me to do. Let me be a vessel for you today. Let my understanding of where I'm going and what I'm doing not be it. Let it be about you. I'm supposed to go on a motorcycle ride. As soon as we leave here, we're going to meet up with a couple and go on a ride. So am I going for a mo motorcycle ride or am I going soul winning? To me, I'm going soul winning. And out of that, I get to go for a ride with a couple of people. Right? That's the awesome part that I get. But the greatest part is God's going to place somebody in front of me that I can share the gospel with. I look forward to that. Right? I look forward. We get some things after service that I'm going to be talking about. There's been incredible things going on. And I can't wait to see what's going to happen today. Yesterday was so phenomenal. Right? So he's, if I trust in him, He'll make my, my path straight, right? You know, I've been running a little crooked here and there, so I need to have that straightened out, right? Okay, next verse. We're going to Ephesians. Ephesians 4. Ephesians 4, 31 and 32. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you along with malice. Be kind to one another, tender hearted, forgiving, as God Christ forgave you. Right? How much better can my day be if I let all of that go? Right? And I just, you know, no matter what comes, even if I'm in the right, apologize. It takes the steam out of everything. 
right? If someone's got a problem with you and they're coming in your face and the first thing you say is, wow, I'm sorry. What are they going to do with that? Still fight you? They will try, but the more you can break down and break away from that and trust in Him, God, how do you want me to treat this person? Pleasantly, with kindness, with affection, right? But the first thing I want to do is slap them, then I want to pray for them. <laughs> right? Because that's where my flesh goes, right? Shout out, right? But where did that get me? It got me in the fight that I didn't want to be in. It got me in relationships that I, I had aggravation in, that I didn't want to go there because that person was there, because I couldn't get rid of that bitterness in my heart. It wasn't in them, it was in me, right? It was the wreckage that was in me. Bitterness equals smolding resentment. So when I have bitterness, it's just, it's that fire that won't go out. It's that little flame waiting to spark off, right? And once it's going to spark off, it sparks off in wrath, right? Wrath is snappy rage, right? You know what you did. You know when you did it, right? Because I didn't let go of that. I walk around in that, right? And I, and I say this many times, I walk around in that with that snappy rage in me with anger. And anger is the internal hostility, right? I got this anger that's inside me. That just, so someone cuts in front of me at the corner store when I'm in line, and I'm like, you know, we got a line here, <laughs> right? That's my answer. There's a line. It starts over there, right? When instead I'd say, hey, Go right ahead, you in a hurry? Right? What would God offer to me? Right? Yeah. He'd be offering me like, yeah, go first. Right? But my flesh is stuck in all this bitterness, this wrath, this anger. Right? Slander. What's slander? Evil speaking. Right? Simple. No, stupid, the line starts back there. Wait a minute, I'm pointing at myself. <laughs> Right? As soon as I can say I'm pointing at myself, the steam's taken out of the argument, right? And now it can be, but if you're in a hurry, you can come in front of me, right? Maybe you've got to be to the hospital because you've got someone that's injured. I don't know what your hurriness is. Maybe your life's in a jam. How about we pray, right? Maybe you're in trouble and we can, we can offer a, a way out. We can teach you how to let go and let God, right? Give all that to God, all the anger, the resentments, the smoldering yuck, right? Say, Lord, take it. It's yours. I don't want it no more. It's eating a hole in me. It's destroying all my relationships. Please take it from me. And he says, done. It's done. It's all taken. Don't worry about it. It's gone. And then someone cuts me off. And I take it all back, and I'm going to chase them home. It's like, because I won't give it to them. How do I do that? Pride, arrogance, self-righteousness, right? I'm smothered in that. When I stay smothered in that, I don't have any peace. All right? I have no peace in my life. My wife has no peace. My children have no peace because I'm not at peace. I'm walking around like a bull in a china shop. Right? I want that to change. How do I change? I say, God, it's yours. You keep it. You fix it. And if there's someone you're going to place in front of me because they're in a hurry, let me be sensitive enough to offer them the gospel. Let me offer them a door out. Because I got the door out. Someone offered that to me. What a blessing I had, right? To be able to have someone step. And I was at the point where I was ready to listen, right? And there's only certain people I would have listened to. So he placed the people that I would listen to in front of me. So when you're in front of someone, it's because God placed you there because you're the person <laughs> that they would be willing to listen to, right? So it's even more important than just dropping all the aggravation and the hatred and the anger in your own heart. It's about you doing God's work because He chose you to be there at that moment in time. Right? Wow! That makes that all different. Right? Now I'm just 
I'm not just being a good Christian down at the corner store. I'm doing God's work because he chose me to be at that point in time to share with someone. Wow. No one has ever been able or willing to offer me that type of responsibility for anything in my life. Yet here, God, our Creator, has offered that to me. Can I follow it? Or do I stay in my own flesh? I'm going for a motorcycle ride. I ain't got time to be talking to no one about Jesus. Right? I've had moments that I feel that way. Not today. I'm not doing that today. And then you get this little tug on your heart that says, yeah, you've been placed here. It's time to share. And then, boom, everything else in my life, all the aggravations are gone. They're gone. I don't, how did that happen? I don't know how that happened because I like keeping aggravation sometimes. I like smoldering in it, <laughs> right? That kind of makes me feel good sometimes. I know I was right. They can't tell me that I was wrong doing that. That guy should have never went over there and cut in line in front of me like that. He didn't, right? I like that sometimes. But it's all gone. Boom, just went away, right? Because I started following. He straightened my path, right? He straightened my path and it changed my life. And everybody around my circle got changed because I wasn't walking in smoldering resentment, right? Wow. So now I can see the results of not doing that and having peace in my heart. Now I start to baby step into learning how to let go and let go. Let them. Let them take it, right? Because I, I'm burnt from trying to hold on to this all my life. I don't want it anymore, right? Jeremiah 29. Jeremiah 29, verse 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare and not for evil. Wow. He just backed up everything we just talked about. Right? <laughs> it's his plan. Am I willing to fall through with what he's asking me to do, or am I too busy stuck in my own will, my own way, and my own flesh? Right? He's made the plan. He's placed us here today. He's placed people in front of us throughout the day this morning already. Were we paying attention to them or were we in a hurry to get to church or were we had to get to the store? Or did we have to stop at the yard sale? <laughs> right? All those things come into play. The world doesn't want you to share the gospel with somebody. The devil doesn't want you to share the gospel. He certainly doesn't want to lose one of his people to one of us. Right? He's going to put that battle in play constantly, right? Okay, 1 Peter. 1 Peter, chapter 5. 1 Peter, chapter 5. Verses 7 and 8. Verse 7. Casting all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. Be sober-minded. Be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour. Right? He's just constantly out there looking for us or anybody else that he can just chew right up and spit out, right? And we fall into play with that if we're not being sober-minded, right? Cast all your disconnect, your discouragement, your despair and suffering on the Lord. Believe he knows what he's doing. Does he know what he's doing? Did he place this person in front of me? Did he take me to this store? 
I don't know why I'm in this strange town and I happen to stop at this this silly church here a year ago. Right? I don't know why God brought me here a year ago. He did. Right? So when he brought me here and I found out what the circumstances were, did I say, you know, I don't even know where Crystal is. How did I end up here, let alone in this little church? Right? This is craziness. No, you people need a pastor. Nah, it's not me. Right? No, I went home and sold my house. <laughs> right? And I still kind of don't believe that I did all that, right? Because we changed our lives forever, right? Our whole family's lives and a lot of people's lives that we've touched up here, right? It's just like, I'm not going to live in that, right? We all submit to something, someone. Submission and humility to God is victory to God, right? He victors in us when we stay humble in Him, right? So if I let go and let God, everything becomes glorious around me. Even the attacks when the devil's prowling around trying to do things to me and to my family, it attacks my family all the time, right? <coughs> I'd be on my way to service here and I'd run out of gas on the way. I, I know I put gas in the night before. All these things come into play to make me go back to that smoldering resentment, right? Constant attacks, right? I was with a man yesterday. He's uh, he had to fly down, uh, uh, I think Florida, where a young man hung himself. And he's to get down there and be the light for the people that are suffering around this young man. And he called last night. You can't believe how many people there were ready, willing, and able to receive Christ over the death of this young man mm. that brought everybody else in, right? But if he said, if he went down there and just was afraid to share the gospel, right? Or, or didn't think that that's what he was there for, or wasn't willing to be the light that Christ picked him to go there for, that wouldn't have happened. It would have just been another crying time and we're going to bury somebody and oh well, have a good day, right? How often does that happen? When we can use every single issue in life good or bad for him right what an awesome story he's going to come back with the devil constantly looking to overwhelm us with temptation persecution discouragement satan sows discord he loves to get into a church and wreck it he mm -hmm. loves to get into a christian family and wreck it sure. He loves to put out newer drugs. He loves to attack police departments. He loves it. He loves this destroy. He's laughing and dancing around. This is his era. He gets to go play, and that's what he's doing. Where do we fall in that? Right? Where do we fall in that? We let go, and we let God for the things that we have to. The things that we can change, we think, we change. The things that we can't, we have to give to God and watch the miracle that He does in the change of it. And He does it. He just said He's going to do all that. He's going to back us up 100%. He's there. Amen. we got to let Him. When you can look at what He's going to do as encouragement, I can't wait to see what He's going to do. Or well, I don't know what's going to happen. You know, Lord, I, I hope you're going to fix this for me. He says, wait a minute, I just told you I already did. Awesome. Awesome. God already did. But it doesn't, maybe there's something more I can do. <laughs> right? Let me, uh, you know, when your kid's on drugs, let me go chase them and hunt them down and drag them in somewhere instead of let's see what God's going to do. And it might even be bring him home. I don't know. You know, the only thing I can do is make sure that he believes in Jesus Christ, and that's the best I can do for him. Right? Okay. From there, I don't know. Maybe I'll get to see the reward. Maybe I won't. Right? It's all in what I do. Right? Satan accuses God to men, men to God, and men to men. 
I'm battling with people. I don't want to go to church. The guy that I thought was my new friend never shows up, doesn't call me. All these things that come into play, it's all coming from the devil. And I fall into it. His job is to drag Christians out of fellowship with Christ and each other. Amen. That's the devil's job. Is he doing it in your life? Is he doing it in your friend's life? Are you able to see how you had the opportunity to share the gospel? He said, you know, I just couldn't do it today. I just, something got in the way. They weren't ready to hear it. Wait a minute. Jesus Christ picked us, me, you, to go speak to that person. Right? He chose us to do that. Wow. Wow. But maybe it was wrong. <laughs> maybe today it wasn't the day. Right? No. Fear, doubt, and insecurity I'm being attacked with constantly. The devil is hitting me with a barrage of that. Right? Where's my solution to that? Heroin, alcohol, clonopin, Prozac. That's my solution. Or let go and let go. Hmm. Much easier to let go and let go. Uh, no, it's not. Because I keep wanting to take my will back. I want to keep taking charge, right? And I'm not saying that there isn't medications out there that is awesome medications because God made those. Right? I, I take high blood pressure pills. Thank you, Jesus. Right? But you know what? Oh my, I don't take two today, just in case. <laughs> right? Uh, maybe I ought to have four. Right? No. But if I got a couple of Percocets, I'm going to take four. Because <laughs> the first two weren't working right, so two more ought to add it up. Right? Well, that's the devil. Attacking my Christian base to take me away from the fellowship with other <coughs> fellow Christians and Jesus Christ. If I'm sitting in the corner drooling because I get too much dope in me, I'm not fellowshipping with anybody, including myself. Right? So you think that's working well for the devil right now? Yeah. I will take over the world through sorcery. Sorcery breaks down the pharmacia. Pharmacia breaks down the pharmacy. Boom! He's doing exactly what he said he was doing. Right in front of us. We need to offer something else. Let go and let God. Stop the smoldering resentments. Change your heart. Let the hurts go. I can give you a few hurts. <laughs> I got them all, right? Today's list ain't going to work. <laughs> okay, let's go to John 8. John chapter 8. <coughs> Verse 8. Uh, chapter, uh, uh, chapter 8, verse 32. And you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Right? You will know the truth. Here's a clue how you know the truth. First, it's pure, and then it's peaceful. No matter what the storm is, my son, being on a run, the storm, I want to go kill all the drug dealers. I want to stop anybody that might be near him. I want to do all the things that I fleshly and humanly can do to prevent it, just as a father. Or I can say, God, I know you're the best, you're the mightiest, and you're the cure. Fix my kid. He says, okay, it's done. Says, Wait a minute, I'll be right back. I'm going to go get him. <laughs> right? I interrupted his will with my will. Right? And he says, sometimes I'm going to use you. Yeah, you can go get him this time. I don't know. 
how do I know? I come back to fellowship with the people that I need to fellowship, like-minded, iron sharpens iron, that gets me to where my thoughts are clear and pure. I have peace about it. When I'm going down and I'm going to get him and I'm going to do, I'm in the wrong. But when God says, go get him. It's peaceable. It's pure. And I know. It's a battle though. Because my heart wants to go get him and save him. Because I know I can. I keep taking my will back. It's the same will that I had when I was using drugs. When I wanted to get high. There was more peace in the drugs than there was in the life that I was living. I was listening to a young man the other day. He said, I didn't turn myself into the police department knowing that I had a warrant. And I knew I'd have to stop using my drugs. I didn't want to be incarcerated. Chasing those drugs is not incarcerated? I didn't think so. Total freedom, right? And I always say to the guys, the guys that have been in the can, they know what I say. Nobody's ever going to tell me what to do. Yeah. Well, when you're in the can, they only give you one roll of toilet paper. And you only get a new one on Thursday. <laughs> right? So it's like, you don't even get to have go buy your own roll of toilet paper and you tell them when, when you can have that. You don't imagine how much freedom there is in that. But I'll stand by it and I'll fight my way to hell just to be able to have my freedom to go through the drugs that I'm controlling. Get a job. I can't find a job. Are you kidding me? You should be a salesman. Forty-eight hours a day, you're out buying and selling drugs, man. You're the best. <laughs> right? I can do that all day long. The work it takes to stay to be an addict is incredible. It's absolutely incredible. The, the hatred, the smoldering resentment you have inside yourself about this stuff is so hard. It doesn't have to be that way. You can let that go and let God have it any time you want. I know. I do. I am. And sometimes I don't let go. Sometimes I grab a hold of it and I get angry and I get upset and I chase that whole thing down, but I never pick up because I know the end result. So I have to call people. I, I have friends that I call and I say, look, I'm going to go do this. And they say, okay, sit down, let's pray. Wait a minute. Five years ago, if I called you and said, we had to go correct somebody, you'd be like, pick me up. <laughs> now you want to pray? And then peace comes in my heart. My life changes. My family life changes. I'm not in the newspaper. All the stupidness is gone. Because we let go with someone else and let go. What a life changer. Incredible. And it's all right here in this book. How do I get there? Read the book. Well, I read page 72 in 1962, and I didn't like what it said. Well, we took that page out for you. <laughs> read me. Right? So they didn't have an understanding. How do you get the understanding? I and shop and I, and I have to find the people that teach me how I understand about this book, and then I can be on fire. Right? It's the simplest book on the planet. I know, because I can read it. Reading wasn't easy for me. I, I left school in the seventh grade. I couldn't read, write. I couldn't do anything. I have no phonics. I have no ability to comprehend any of this stuff. Boom! Here I am. All right? I don't know how that happened. All right? I have an older brother. I don't know, he's got to be 70 at this point, I don't even know. He cannot fill out a job application. Never learned how to read or write. Runs in my family. We had such bad dyslexia, we couldn't figure it out. Right? Part of my disability is I have dyslexia so bad I can't read and write. Something changed because of this book. Because I let go and let go in so many areas in my life. It gives other people that ability. It changes everything. I don't get it all the time. Here it is. Right? There's so much. Philippians 4.
verses 6 and 7. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving let your request be made and known to God. He just said, Lord, help me with my son. Done. Wait a minute. Right? I say, wait a minute, and then I go and I call someone and I say, hey, this is what I'm going to go do. And they say, well, let's pray about it. That gives me another moment. God placed that person in my life for me to be able to call them so that I'll look up to them as a flesh person. Sometimes I need a flesh person to talk back to me. I'm not always listening to God. And boom, God hits me with something else from someone else. I am just shop and dying. Boom, I'm not on the run that I was going to do. Verse 7. And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and your mind in Jesus Christ. Wow. That's how I let go. I let go. Can't get any simpler. But we don't like simplicity. We like to clog it up with our will. But if you have the group around you that's going to show you the correct ways to change these things, your life will change. If I surround myself with drug addicts that don't want to get clean, I'm not going to get clean. If I surround myself with people that rob and steal and cheat, I'm going to rob and steal and cheat. And the simplicity of it is, if I hang around the barber shop, I'm going to get a haircut. Even me. <laughs> right? It's fact. It's what's going to happen. I can't go watch the Patriots down at the local pub and expect to not want to have a beer. The devil is prowling around that bar just looking for someone to buy me beers all day long. It won't even cost you. I'll buy them all all day for you. Right? Then you have a beer. And someone says, hey, we're going outside. I'm going to smoke a fatty. Oh! I'm off kilter because I get alcohol in me, so I might as well go smoke that too, right? And I'm just falling into the devil's trap, thinking freedom, freedom. Nobody's going to tell me what to do. Which jail would you like to go to? <laughs> I don't know how to be humble. We're going to give you six months instead of a year. Thank you, Your Honor. Instant humility. Right? Instant. Cop pulls you over. Yes, sir. What can I do for you? Right? Some of the toughest guys always say, yes, sir. The guys that get out, some guys get out. I used to get out. It's not a good thing. 